This video is a recording from the Men Improvement Podcast, brought to you by menprovement.com, the number one self improvement resource strictly for men. Go there today to see all podcasts, improve yourself as a man, and get access to three free ebooks, including one that will help you triple your testosterone naturally. Thank you and enjoy. This is episode three of the Men Improvement Podcast Hardcore Self Improvement. Ready to take your life to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Get all the information you need to be better, improve everything, and live life like a pro. This is the Men Improvement Podcast with Sean Russell. What is up, guys? Welcome back. This is episode three, and I have an amazing show for you today. The topic of today's show is a pretty awesome one. It's hardcore self-improvement. Now, what I mean by hardcore self-improvement is pretty much anything that you won't find on lifehack.org or other self-improvement sites. I'm talking male enhancement, using performance enhancement drugs, learning how to get laid, and other cool shit like that. So we're going to talk to our guests about all these things and then specifically go into male enhancement and how you can actually increase the size of your dick up to two inches completely naturally over time. And I have the absolute best guest for the subject in the studio today. It's Chris from goodlookingloser.com. What's up, Chris? How you doing, man? What, what's happening, Sean? Thank you for having me. Nah, man. Thanks for being here. It's incredible. I know you're a busy guy. Yeah. No, that definitely. <laughs> definitely. It's one of the first podcasts I've done in a while, but it's a, it's a pleasure. Yeah, man. I'm a big fan of your stuff. And the thing is, you either know like who you are or you don't know who you are so a lot of you listening have probably never heard of a good looking loser but he's massively popular in the hardcore self-improvement community and when people kind of come across your site they kind of become like lifers you know you have a you have a real community feel about what goes on over there at goodlookingloser.com and i love it yeah i think so like you said we talk we do talk and get into stuff nothing's taboo on our site there's a lot of sites that are talking about meeting women, where we talk about getting laid, and I can explain the difference later. Um, male enhancement obviously separates us. Uh, the not very safe for work pages separate us. So yeah, it was definitely what I was going for. And uh, but yeah, man, it's, it's been a blast though. Yeah, man. The one thing that I love about your site more than like pretty much any other one out there is is how much of a community it really is. Like I went on there and I posted on the forum and. Before you even answered, I had like three or four other guys welcoming me and, uh, you know, asking me questions and stuff. It's like you can go there with, uh, you know, insecurities and you want to, you know, you might not be very good at meeting women and you might be a really shy guy. You might have a lot of uh, anxiety problems in your life and you can go to the Good Looking Loser Forum, which has like 6,000 members. It's like a new post every two minutes. It's crazy. And you can go on there and you're with a whole bunch of guys who can relate to you and have been through what you've been through and can help you along the way. It's really a beautiful thing. I think it's – and the interesting thing is we don't have many trolls on the forum. Now, hopefully me announcing that won't lead to some sort of influx at all. But um, the topics we talk about, they turn a lot of people off like instantly. And the good part about that is – those that will join the forum, that will participate, who are part of the community, you know, they, they're they obviously not turned off by these topics. So it's kind of like they're screened in and then people that would be disruptive otherwise would be screened out. So that I think is to thank for the big uh, community feel, as you say. So it's worked out pretty well. Yeah, it's awesome. And like you said, man, it's like that, that site that you don't want to go on at work. I think it's a site that you... Like personally, if I were on it using all the stuff like maybe a year ago, I wouldn't want to tell my friends about it too much, you know, because it's kind of personal stuff. But you have friends there who are doing it on the site as well. So you can talk, talk about it. But you it's almost a site you wouldn't want someone to find in your browser history because, you know, <laughs> you don't want people to know that you're like enlarging your penis and stuff. But, you know, who who the fuck doesn't want to do that? You know, there's guys everywhere that secretly want to do that. And I like that you can go there and kind of talk to people about it and do that. It's cool. Yeah, I know. We don't get that many like Facebook shares. And I'm kind of wondering when we do get a Facebook share, like somebody's personal Facebook, I, know. Um, I guess some gay guys share it. But most of the guys that are actively participating in the community, it's like not too many Facebook shares. But when we do, 
And I find it like through Google Analytics, I'm just like, what the hell is this person thinking? It's like, I won't even share my own blog on Facebook, <laughs> not under my real name. Although my real name is Chris Diotis, but I don't really tell my too many people that are that close to me about this uh, this site unless we're actively doing stuff like picking up girls um, and that kind of shit. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And, uh, you know, I built menprovement.com for people to come and be able to improve their life. But I've, I've almost strayed away from the topics that you, you've you boldly, like, stepped forward and, and tackled completely. And when I say tackled, like, you know, you go out and you show, you know, you show yourself butt-ass naked on screen taking pictures, you know, for penis enlargement to show before and afters. And you put yourself out there and it's, you know, it's respectable. It, it really is. It takes fucking a lot of courage and guts the thing i liked about that now that was two years ago and what sean's talking about is we have this product called the bath main there's a few others and there's not much shit that works for male enhancement but the bath main for instance will work if you use it for a while it, it's one of the few things that does and um you know the best the best picture says a thousand words so in order to give i guess proof that it did work i put up pictures from myself a long time ago compared to today and like I said, the thing does work and it's done done me pretty good as far as credibility goes. But I knew like straight up when I would put if I'm gonna put up, you know, not very safe for work pictures up on the internet, there was no turning back. Um and that was kind of like more motivation to just go all in with the site and talk about the stuff. We actually have been cleaning it up a little bit. You might not have seen the site a few years ago. I mean, I had like videos of <laughs> me getting down on girls on the like when we very first started um so it's maybe it's it's kind of gone a little more soft core at the moment no i feel i feel you on that one man but i love i love it because you know people people want to see it and you know no one has the balls to do that and you you not only do it and it's not like gross you teach people how to improve their lives which is what it's all about which is why we do this podcast and why i got you on here because everything that you show in videos and everything you give like step-by-step -step tutorials on how to emulate and that's it's beautiful thank you thank you I think that's kind of the problem with most of the mainstream kind of stuff and who I don't even know what mainstream is considered anymore but you know a lot of those a lot of those male uh, improvement sites men's lifestyle sites very few of them give like tangible applicable steps like you said step by step that's ideal like one two three four do this do this do this do this um, so few do that and I've read you know some articles by you 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 also make a very big point of saying actually what the fuck to do and not just beating around the bush be confident um, work hard just these you know generic platitudes that so many sites have and I think ultimately that's where you know, that's a most helpful and but B also what's gets your stuff around. Yeah, no, we definitely have a lot of articles that like, you know, a lot of the girls write and a lot of the other people write that are kinda, you know, kinda generic. And I want to stray away from that almost because yeah, when I write an article it's it's very rare that it's not five thousand words long because I <laughs> if I'm missing like a little detail, I drive myself crazy. I'll go in and, you know, explain it and it's a five thousand word article and you know, if you want, if you really want to come and improve yourself, then you only need one article. You don't need to read 20 articles. So to move on a little bit, I guess, uh, why don't you uh, just tell us like all the topics that you guys cover on Good Looking Loser? Jeez, well, I'm going to click over to Good Looking Loser because I um, should remind myself right now. We talk about a lot of things. It basically started as a site for guys that want to get laid. Believe it or not, there's not much out there like that. There's a lot of how to pick up girls, how to meet women, and then the more mainstream advice of like what to do on dates, how to get girls to like you. There's not a, a site out there until our own, at least I think, is about getting laid. And the difference is meeting women and getting laid, they're not the same thing. Meeting women, going on dates, how to get a girlfriend, that's all well and good but it's not the same as getting laid. It's what we call a lot of the techniques and mindsets for that shit is very, very safe. Very, very safe. Um, you know, don't try to make a move on a girl too soon. Um, a lot of stuff to prevent rejection. 
a lot of, uh, we call it Mr. Funny Man, just little shit to impress girls. And at the end of the day, that kind of has a ceiling on it because it's not very efficient. And, you know, that was one of my biggest criticisms of the whole pickup artist thing because that's kind of the the angle at which, or just the avenue, excuse me, which Good Looking Loser came on the scene through because I spent a good two years around the Los Angeles mainstream pickup artist community. I know a lot of those guys. I've seen them in action. Um, we go to the same gym at Equinox Fitness in West Hollywood. So I met a lot of these guys. And uh, I really did the whole pickup artist thing for a while. Like, the, I, I was a believer. I mean, I really was. Like, so many guys, I got the the book, The Game, and you know, I was a fucking believer at that point. Like, I I would, I lost friends over it. Like, I was be doing this, like, stuff. I'd be, like, peacocking, and they're like, fuck are you wearing, dude? And, like, I would I would take personal offense to that because this is, like, yeah, man. Uh, this this was like me. I mean, I was in a stage, but it was me at the time. Um, so I did that for a while. When I moved out to LA, I was actually part of a pickup artist like program, um, and I, I look so not the type to be part of this kind of thing. And that's why it was weird. But ultimately, why I didn't actually need a lot of this stuff. But I've learned to figure out like what worked and what did not. And we basically, that's what Good Looking Loser uh, was based on. That, like the most efficient and productive way to pick up girls and sleep with them. Um, not beating around the bush. We're not talking about getting numbers. We're talking about guys that go out same night, bring chicks home. That's what our site's about. And I always thought it was funny with like this pickup artist thing. You know, you get the number and then you play text game and then there's day one, day two, day three, meaning you go on like three dates and then you get laid. The guys that are really getting, you know, really getting action, they're not spending time out there on date number three with a girl. So um, I always found that interesting. Very few people point that out. So that's the, one of the main angles of Good Looking Loser. But there's so much that, that goes in and getting laid. Um, at least if in, in the self improvement type of thing, I used anabolic steroids quite a bit in my twenties. Um, originally I like to say for sports, but the reality is, you know, it's probably just completely vanity and stuff like that. So we have articles on anabolic steroids. I used to train with a guy that won Mr. Tampa in the super heavyweight division. I learned so much from this dude. And then the male enhancement, as Sean said, um, other performance enhancing drugs besides anabolic steroids, we talk about things like modafinil. You guys might have heard of that. It is um, the stimulant that actually will keep you awake for like 24 hours straight. There's not much better that's better for productivity than that. Anti-anxiety, whether it be Phenobut or Kratom, I probably have a decade of, of experience with both combined. Um, you know, my 20s were really spent uh, – I spent way too many hours on the internet, but to my credit, I really did experiment with a lot of shit from drugs to women to everything. And, you know, that's kind of the story. That's what Good Looking Loser is. It's what it's based on. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like it sounds like you did the typical like 10,000 hour rule with this whole self-improvement thing. You know, you had your you had your seven year apprenticeship when you started as you know in this pickup artist community which we you know i think guys who are into this kind of stuff they all go through it because i also uh probably two three years ago i was reading stuff like uh you know some books by richard la runa and the game and like i never really took action on it but now i'm into stuff like rsd and real social dynamics and day game and your stuff you know and it's mm -hmm. it's effective and it's it's incredible so yeah you've spent you know you said a decade becoming the guy you are now and now you're in a position where you can pretty much help guys who are in the spot you were a decade ago which is an overwhelming amount of the population because of how the world we live in today with like everything going on so you're like the guy you're like a guru essentially for this you know getting laid improving your life and i guess so and after like the whole pickup community left a bitter taste in my mouth and when we had an idea to put our dating advice or whatever on the internet, Brian, aka Scotty, he's the other guy that works on Good Looking Loser with me, suggested it. I was not even interested. I was like, you and I know that the internet is not a place to learn about women. 
it, it's a fucking mess. You know, it's it, it's all theory. It's all garbage. When we were out picking up girls, we didn't go anywhere near any sort of website or forum. Uh, we used to. We used to be into that. But when it when it comes to actually uh, getting good at this stuff, your your laptop is closed. Like it really is. So I had no interest in doing it. But he talked me into it. We shot some videos. And um, my view with it was, you know, I never wanted to be seen as a guru or anything. I was just going to put up my story, say what was good, what was bad, what worked, what did not work, and just general lifestyle advice and be done with it. Good Looking Loser was supposed to be like a passive site as after like about six months and I wasn't going to touch it or anything. Um, but the feedback we got tr was tremendous, really, even at the start. So that's kind of, uh, you know, I really have no choice. Not Anyway. That's really interesting that you were just going to have it as like a uh, passive stream of income site, you know, not not updating. And now it's turned into this this mega this mega site. And it's cool, man. It's really cool. So, I, I mean, I wanted nothing to do about talking about women. I'm actually, you know, we're going to do some more videos and it's an endless topic. And I have a I have a bunch of dry erase boards in my room with all this shit written down that I have to do. But one day I will be finished with it and we'll almost go more the general direction of making money and building a website and people are equally as interested in that and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I never really had any plans to be here on a podcast talking to you about, yeah. uh, uh my, bad, my bad, dude. Sorry. <laughs> Just kidding, man. All right. So I want to jump into a topic and I guess, you know, we had someone, we have someone tomorrow actually that's going to do a podcast about picking up women. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll start with male enhancement because, this is a topic that is kind of, you know, a gray area in in the world because no one knows, you know, no one believes it works. No one knows if it works pills and there's so many scams out there. But I mean, I know from reading your site that, you know, you would say male enhancement is 100 percent possible, correct? 100 percent possible definitely doesn't mean that 100 percent of the stuff works. In fact, probably single digits of um, devices or supplements or anything that actually does work. So it is possible. I've been at that for the better part of a decade, actually. I was a kid. I found this shit, and it was very primitive back then, probably about year 2001. That's when I was graduating high school. And when all the, I guess, normal kids were out partying and stuff like that, um, I joined in that sometime. I wasn't, like, unpopular, but... You know, I was spending time like jelking my dick at home, thinking to myself, well, you know, one day it's really going to pay off. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I was into it from the start. There was never any devices like there are today. Devices meaning things that will speed up the process tremendously. There was jelking and stretching. And um, for the better part of a decade, I did it very inconsistently because it is it's kind of a pain. It's boring. Like it literally legit is boring if you're going off to college, um, times are limited. I mean, I'm come back in my room and pretending I'm taking a nap, but I'm like stretching my dick and my roommate walks in and it yeah. just seems weird. So, yeah, no. so <laughs> I know, was, yeah, I know where you're coming from, man, because you know, uh -huh. I, I think when I was like, you know, 20, 21, I'm always into this stuff, you know, always, I guess it's just like a kind of person I am. And like my friends, you know, not so much. And it's weird, but like, yeah, I've, you know, I've tried it. I've tried jelking before and I've tried stretching and I've just kind of just gave up on it and like, ah, oh, fuck this shit, you know, like, uh, I don't know, maybe a month or two months and just never, you know, never really, never really put dedication to it. But yeah, I understand exactly where you're coming from when you say that, that it's weird, you know, you feel weird doing it, but you don't feel weird doing it. But if someone were to find out, you'd be like, you'd feel like the fucking biggest weirdo ever. And I and think too, yeah, once you, you get a, once you get a big dick, though, then it's all good. Because I found that, I mean, I don't really have any shame these days on anything, but um, that's kind of right, like, yeah, when, when you're working your way up, it's probably not something that uh, you care to announce to the world or put on your Facebook status, but um, there's things that make it, like, a lot faster these days, and that's where some of the newer things come in today, but like Sean was saying, it does work, it does take dedication, you don't want to be measuring you know, monthly in inches, you want to literally be measuring in millimeters because of that, that is kind of the process. But if you can, you can probably gain like one month if you're re one inch in 
six to 12 months if you're really dedicated. Like that, that's kind of where it's at these days with the stuff out there and just putting the time, but it has to be like a, at least your number two goal. Like it, it does take time. You're going to be, you'll be at it at least an hour or more every day. And it's, it's not just an hour or more every day. You got to warm up in the shower. You got to do all sorts of shit. So, you know, it's never quite as simple as, Oh, just gel for 10 minutes. Like that 10 minutes is probably closer to 30 minutes. Yeah. And we're going to, you know, I'm going to try to get, get into a, like a routine style thing with you and get into all that more and what everything means. Cause some people might not know what jelking and stuff means. We're definitely going to jump into that. I just want to, yeah, I just want to say like, it is something that, you know, people would have to dedicate themselves to like anything else, like getting women. I'm doing that right now. You know, I was never great at picking up women and right now it's pretty much my life. You know, I, I go out and I have to do it every day because you have to. And it's, it's like anything else, you know, you want to improve your 40 yard dash, you, you know, it, it has to become your life and you want to get a bigger dick. It has to become your life, I guess, essentially. But, um, I also think that like a lot of people, a lot of guys need to think about why they're doing it, you know? And like minus, like, I'm not talking to the guys that may have like a, you know, a, pro- a medical problem and like a sub four inch penis right now. I'm talking to the guys that like, they watch too much porn and they have, you know, an average size penis and they're insecure and they feel, they feel like shitty and they have no sexual confidence so they they resort to penis enlargement to try to cure their problems but honestly i think i think you need to face your your insecurities and become comfortable with your body and then afterwards if you're like yeah you know why not i want a bigger dick that'd be fun you know i want to satisfy satisfy my girlfriend better then you know move on to trying penis enlargement i think having the right reasons behind it is powerful because if it doesn't work one you know it's gonna it's you know it's gonna kill you because you thought it's like your last resort and two it's just more powerful to be comfortable with your body and like you can satisfy a woman with like a four inch like dick you know you just need to know how to do it and i don't know what what are your thoughts on that i think you know and that applies to a lot of a lot of stuff because i was thinking about this the other day on on the life on we have a lifestyle side of ours we keep all the adult content off that that one is safe for work gll dash get a life you can also find that on good looking loser and one of the more recent topics was how i was saying insecurity is your best friend because i fully well admit when i started all this stuff whether it be lifting weights penis enhancement whatever i was i was insecure but i do feel and you know i ideally that's what you're trying to change it's not about the dick size it's not about the muscle sizes or yeah. and stuff like that you know you're just trying to you trying to feel good about yourself. I do believe with some of these, at least, at least through my journey, that there comes a point where you actually start to feel secure ab- about things, you know, maybe not what you thought or maybe so. And then it kind of becomes fun after that, especially yeah. when it starts working. So I, there, there are definitely a lot of reasons behind guys getting into certain stuff and, um, I guess everyone's unique in, in that case. I started a lot of the stuff that I started working on in my life was out of sheer insecurity. And a lot of it was solved by like improving just just becoming comfortable. It might have been improving stuff, it might have just been maturity. I, I don't even I don't even know. But yeah, um, yeah, I get you I get that. I get that. Because I mean it is it is weird because I guess I was the same way when I was uh twenty, twenty one. And now I would say I'm much more comfortable with my body, even with the same exact penis size as I had when I was 21. Whereas I, I may have like been, I was a, you know, I watched porn a lot. And, you know, you met, you look at guys on, in porn movies and you, you look at yourself and you're like, fuck. But then like, I don't watch porn anymore. And like, I kind of, I, you know, I'm into a lot of like self, self improvement, like meditation and things like that. And through that, I'm a lot more secure with myself to the point where I'm like, you know, I'm, I love my body, you know, and I know I have no qualms about, you know, penis size or anything, but I I know it would still be cool to, you know, increase the size of my dick. But I know that some guys aren't like that and they will, you know, you can beat an insecurity by, you know, fixing what you're insecure about. Yeah. But it's not going to work. But then it becomes something else. So that's where I I do agree with you. It's, it's, it's not even the top, it's not even the focus that that matters so much it just then becomes something else 
that's why and some like girls especially are, are guilty of this I mean or just kind of warped into this where you know it's plastic surgery and then it just more and more and more and more and this ever you know this quest for perfection but it's not even about perfection it's just to feel like reasonable like with yourself just to accept yourself so I totally agree I totally agree there it's mixed across the board I really uh, I really do I really do think that. Yeah, so yeah, there's a, you know, there's a fine line between, you know, self-improvement and like, but, you know, it's, it's, it is, it's a good fuel, you know, almost, but you also need to learn to be comfortable with yourself. I think it only becomes a problem when the, you know, like when I was 21 and like, and there's so many guys that are probably in the same position. When you have like an, you know, six, six to seven inch dick and you're watching porn all the time and you think, you know, you have a small dick because you're watching guys with like nine, ten inch dicks having sex that's when it becomes a problem because you're not educated and you you know you feel insecure about something you shouldn't feel insecure about and when it affects your sex life and you're you know you're nervous with girls and it could affect your performance it could even cause ed that's when it's a problem you know i think that yeah, it's like it, if you especially guys that are inexperienced who have their first experience with a girl who's inexperienced she doesn't masturbate she can't even give herself an orgasm and you're and you're you know you're nailing her and it doesn't look like she gets off so guys, I guess people in general, but especially guys in the case of women, they tend to blame themselves. And, you know, a lot of guys arrive at the conclusion, my dick's too small. I couldn't make this girl orgasm. I couldn't make my ex-girlfriend orgasm, something like that. And then it just becomes this lifelong insecurity when actually she's never made herself orgasm either. So how how is that your fault? What what chance do you stand at making her get off if she can't get herself off? So there's a there's a lot of reasons. A lot of guys have very false in, uh, interpretations of things that just th- blaming themselves. So yeah, uh, it's funny how deep the the male enhancement does does uh, go. But if you guys are interested in it, it does work. It takes time, so you got to have to be dedicated to. Um, at best, you'll probably get two inches unless you have uh, a lot of weight to lose, and then you can possibly get you know beyond that. But um, you know, it'll take you a good two years, though. Yeah, we're definitely going to jump into how to do it, and I'm sorry for jumping out of uh, off topic with the insecurity thing, but I'm um, you know, I just want guys out there to just you know understand. You know, I think the average size penis is what like five and a half inches long in in yeah. the world. So like you know. Yeah, be comf- you know, yeah, you can you can totally do penis enlargement like up to you, all good, but you know, I think the first step would to be com- become comfortable with your body. That's even more powerful because there's nothing sexier to a woman than a guy who's comfortable with his dick. You know, you can have a smaller dick than a guy and be comfortable with it and like whip your pants off and if that guy's not comfortable, like she's going to know and she's going to react accordingly to that. So, but yeah, with that, you know, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for jumping off topic, but we'll jump no, into. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. We'll jump into how you know. Let's start with what you know. What doesn't work? You know what what stuff that's being advertised out there that doesn't work and won't enlarge your penis at all, and will just waste your money. Anything that comes in pill form, seriously, unless it's uh, Cialis or Viagra. There's a lot of these dick pills out there. I get if we were to do a little. Google email search for how many companies from who that were selling their you know all natural formula that gives you a bigger dick you know sense of me trying to get me to uh, promote their product I probably had over 200 of them and I didn't even know that 200 even existed but anything comes in capsule form is basically bullshit they take different angles they say you know make your um make your dick bigger and that's that's wrong that won't happen that won't happen unless it it must somehow the product increases your insulin growth factor. That will not happen. Number two, give you harder erections. That is somewhat plausible, but a lot of these pills, the only ingredient that possibly does that is L-arginine, and you got to take a big dose of it to do that. And then the third is to give you, you know, a higher libido sex drive. And there's not a hell of a lot that really does that either. And even if it does, it's what I call like a one percent difference. Where it's uh, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, and dietary supplements are definitely like that to begin with. So pills, no, but which, and pretty much anything else I don't name in here doesn't work. But as far as what does work, stretching your dick with your hands, we have a whole guide on that. 
jelking your dick, which is basically like milking it, and that's primarily for girth. So those are the two kind of like base exercises that you need to know. And there's a few devices that work as well. You want me to talk about those real quick? Yeah, and I think, um, you know, it's going to be hard to uh, kind of get a feel for all this stuff just listening to it for someone who's interested in this. So if you're interested in this and, you know, you take my advice first and get comfortable with your body and then you're like, fuck it, I'm going to make myself the best version of myself. (laughs) Head over to goodlookingloser.com afterwards because he's got everything in routines and videos and, you know, he, he'll he show you step by step how to do it. So, yeah, let's jump in. I guess let's jump into what, you know, how to how to jelk essentially, how to, you know, what devices work. What would you, you know, kind of pretend that you're talking to, you know, a group of newbies and you're just telling them how to make their dick bigger. Well, anything I could tell you here wouldn't be as good as the video on my site where I'm actually doing it. So that's that's the easiest way to learn the thing. But basically, you hop you hop in the shower, you let the hot water run on your dick so it gets loose. Uh, you pull it every which sort of direction. You hop out of the shower and uh, you get a half boner, maybe a little bit more, and you run your like take your hand in an OK sign, like make an OK sign with your hand, and you run that right down the shaft of your dick, which has like about a half boner, pushing the blood from the base of your dick to the head. Um, like Sean says, it's hard to tell just based on like a, a visual description, but that is jelking. Stretching is exactly as it sounds. It's done with a soft penis. You don't want a boner if you're stretching. And basically you take your hands, ideally both of them, depending on what stretches you do. I got videos of me doing them all on my site. And you basically stretch your dick as you would stretch your you know, your quad or your, you know, your arm, whatever, in a certain direction, you hold it for 30 to seconds to 60 seconds and all this stuff, it adds up over time. Um, this is definitely not something that impatient people, uh, really should get into. Although if you have never done this before, you'll gain very quickly. Uh, you can gain like about a half inch and probably about two or three months if you're new to it, but those newbie gains. Yeah. It's like muscles. Yeah, exactly. And actually, the same principle, penile tissue is different than smooth muscle tissue. Yeah. So bodybuilding, weightlifting, smooth muscle tissue, penile tissue, it's basically this male enhancement stuff. It's not quite the same, but at the same time, it is. And it is because if you break it down, I don't mean injure it, but if you work it out, just like you would in the gym, it comes back bigger and longer. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely scientific reasoning behind it you know you're breaking down cells and they're going to multiply and when they heal essentially but it's such a slow process you know you're not gonna just get results in a month for cells regenerating and breaking down and healing like that's that's just like millis millimeters and millimeters adding up over months and months and months of hard work so yeah this is definitely something that is like a long-term commitment and you mentioned you mentioned you know you don't want to injure yourself i think we should definitely talk you know i don't want anyone on here to jump into this stuff and injure themselves so if you are interested in it you know proceed at your own risk first off and head you know educate yourself on chris's site and learn how to do it correctly don't turn this podcast off and head to the bathroom definitely don't do that (laughs) so (laughs) So, yeah, what would you, you know, what are some injury prevention tips, you know, what are some risks, essentially, and how here's to avoid the, them? Here's the thing that guys got to keep in mind, and and this is kind of why the whole Mount Hanson thing has a bad rap, other than the hundreds of thousands of fraudulent products, but has a bad rap because of safety. Now, that's understandable, but here is how you should look at it. Okay. You can get injured in the gym. You can tear your arm off your shoulder in the gym. You can shat, you can, you can slice your tendons in the gym. So that doesn't keep people out of the gym, at least not most people, but it's the same exact thing. Any sort of exercise you do, whether it be on your dick, your chest, your legs, you can tear your muscle, you can hurt yourself. So how can we prevent that? For one, being warmed up. I really think that's key. That's why if you're going to do the stretching, if you're going to do the gel game, um, put a hot towel on your dick for like five minutes or hop in the shower. That's the easiest thing possible. Get the tissue loose. Just as if you, before you were doing a whole bunch of squats, you would, you know, maybe you would 
run around or get on the treadmill or do some light squats. Like you would warm up, get the tissue loose. That's first and foremost. And second, just as in the gym, you don't want to overtrain. People can definitely get injured overtraining. Same deal with your dick. The rule I've had for 10 years is this. If you can't get a boner that day, like you can't get a boner or it's not really that strong, take that day off. Just as my rule for the gym, if your chest is still sore, don't do bench press. If your legs are still sore, don't do squats. Same deal for the dick. If your dick can't get a full boner or is somehow sore, take that day off. And I really suggest guys do that because you grow when you recover, just as in the gym, you don't grow in the gym, you grow when you're sleeping, you grow when you're eating, mainly when you're sleeping, but it's the rest and recovery periods that give you the growth. So don't be afraid to take days off, whether it be in the gym, whether it be aisle your penis, whatever. Those, I think, are the two things. Prevent overtraining and warm up. Very basic things. And you've just made a process that is otherwise possibly dangerous, but as dangerous as doing squats or bench press, you know, pretty safe. And after a couple months, you'll start to know, you know, what you can take and what you can't take. That, that is, you look, guys get into it, you know, not knowing much about it, but just experience itself. You'll keep yourself safe. You will. Uh, they're very rare. If I've not seen one person that knew what they were doing that got injured. Let's just put it that way. So a lot of the people that didn't know what they were doing, those are the kind of guys that end up with injuries. But it's like that in the gym, too. Yeah, so, you know. It's great advice, and just be careful of that newbie, you know, amped up, like, I want, I'm, this is fucking awesome, I saw my first, you know, centimeter, now I gotta go, I'm gonna do it more and more and more and more, you know, slow and steady wins a race, you know, <laughs> seriously, it's your, uh, this is your manhood, you wanna take care of it, so, alright, so, it's, yeah, it's great advice, avoid injury, you know, we went over what jelking is, so, what, what are some devices out there that uh that work? The one, and it's the very first thing I ever recommended to the Good Looking Loser community, which at the time was quite small, and now it's it's somewhat bigger. It's called the Bathmate. Tosh Point O actually did a skit on um on his show. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it was it was actually kind of funny, and that really got Bathmate out to like the mainstream community. Basically, it is a hydro pump, which is like a water pump. You use it in the shower, and you put it over your dick. After you get comfortable with it, you basically get an erection in the shower, put the bath mate over your dick, pump it up, just leave it on there for 10 or 12 minutes. Very, very simple. Um, takes about a minute to put on, five seconds to take off. It, it is a super efficient way to get a bigger dick. And that is a device that is really good. There's some uh, ripoffs of the bath mate. I don't suggest using those um, just because there's a lot of these companies – out there, and this will never change, their devices, their customer service, they just want to make a sale. And if you get something that's cheap and it breaks, good luck getting that back. Bathman is actually the most established name out there. For the most part, they take care of everyone um, you know, that doesn't like the product in a month or something like that. But again, you have to use this thing for a while. The best thing about the Bathmate, though, is, and this is what this is why I recommend it because I know guys will be into this kind of thing. After you put it on and largely with like a full boner, your dick is immediately bigger. Put it on, leave it on for 10 minutes, take it off. Your dick is immediately bigger, immediately bigger than you've ever seen it before. And that alone, guys are like, whoa, this, this thing is actually legit. Now, you have to do that many, many months. But once your dick is pumped up, you can take it in the bedroom. OK, like one of the most fun thing, fun things in the world is to have sex with a girl with your dick pumped up. I mean, it's like not only is she <laughs> very aware of the situation, but it's it's like the closest thing to being a porn star. Like, seriously, it makes that much of a dramatic difference on your dick when it's pumped up. So that's one thing that's really good. Two other things out there. Uh, Batman can give you length, but it's largely for girth. The two other things out there are they kind of have the same um, approach as stretching your dick. And these take, again, hundreds and hundreds of hours to work. That means actually a little bit quicker. But the product name is Size Genetics, and there's Phallus and Forte. They're basically the same type of thing. They both do the same thing. 
Um, it's personal preference, which one guys like. But those are really the only three out there. And the good news is you only need two of them to make significant, significant gains. So those would be the ones that I recommend. Um, they can take the place of jelking and stretching because that is tedious. It takes a lot of hours, and this is, this is faster. But if you ever want to gain like two inches, like you can get an inch with just the devices, but if you ever want to gain two inches, you probably have to do some manual stuff. And that's up to you at that point. It depends on what your goals are. Uh, that's great, man. It's I like how you uh you know, you mentioned that it's fun. You know, it's fun to to do it and then pop out into the bedroom. I think that's there's no reason better than that, you know. But um Yeah, so that's you know, that's a lot of great information i'm trying to i'm trying to think like what would you what would you suggest for a newbie routine like i guess um i know you have all this on your site but just just real quick like how many how many days a week how many uh you know what what would you suggest to start off with and how to progress every other day it could be monday wednesday friday it could be whenever you're getting um Privacy, it just depends. If you have the bath me, you can follow our routine, which basically calls for you to use it about six to eight minutes every other day for the first month. And if you're doing jelking, do it um, you know, ten minutes every other day to start off with. Your first month, you're just getting you're just getting used to the to the devices, to the workouts and stuff like that. So uh, the good news is you can gain very quickly. But, um, yeah, like Sean said, the routines are on our site. Uh, it, it's just getting started. Like, a lot of guys get into this and they feel they have to do 60 or 90 minute workouts or they won't see anything. Nothing could be further from the case. You can do about 10 minutes with a bath mate, 10 minutes of jelking for a whole month, and you'll probably see gains. Um, you'll need to increase your workout load from there. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to get started. It really shouldn't take that much time. That's awesome, man. And, you know, if you're going to get started, obviously, you know, you're going to head to Chris's website because it's it's packed with information. And, you know, this is, you know, this is self-improvement. It's a pretty taboo topic, but this is self-improvement. You know, you want to make your biceps bigger. It's the same thing. And, you know, there's no, there's, there's not going to be any topics left out on this podcast. This is men improvement, self-improvement for men. And we're going to get everything here. So I hope you guys, you know, got a lot out of this here because I know I did. I just want to sum it up, I guess, in a couple a couple things. For one, you know, we're not medical doctors, so proceed at your own risk. And these are opinions. Got to got to back my ass up. And two, you know, be comfortable, be comfortable with your own skin and, you know, maybe stop watching so much porn, you know. Be confident sexually because being comfortable with your body and confident sexually is even more attractive than having an extra inch and still being a little bit uncomfortable because you want more. And number three is, you know, like anything else that involves success, making money, you know, getting ripped, play, you got to play the long game because if you try to take shortcuts, if you try to get rich, screen, get rich scheme, you're going to get burned. And if you try to go at this kind of stuff too fast and without, you know, precision and care, I don't even want to think about, you know, getting burned in that sense. You know, you can always get money back, but this is your this is your manhood. And if you're a little self-conscious about it, then what are you going to do if it doesn't work? So take your take your time and, you know, do it right. And Chris has the way to do it right on his website. So any last any last words for anyone listening that you know heard this and is like you know this sounds cool i'm gonna give my wife a nice present next year i think as long as you know what you're doing as it could be with getting in the gym driving a car swimming any type of thing um maybe perhaps the stakes are higher because it is your dick but nobody that knew what they were doing ever messed up their dick and it's it's really not a black or white thing worst case scenario there is a 99% chance you get injured or something like that, which I never have in 10 plus years that actually we're talking, we're going on 14 years now um, that it heals. I mean, it is, it is your dick, but it is like other body parts. You want to warm up. You don't want to overtrain, but um, yeah, educate yourself first. You'll be fine. Yeah. You know, injuries obviously 
it's like any other part it will heal most of them but still you don't want it all right so that you know that was fantastic man and you know there's you know, like chris has four to five other big topics that i wanted to cover but obviously we're we're not going to pump them all into one session i think we're going to cut this here guys you know if you feel if you feel like penis enlargement is an area that you guys want to improve head to chris's website and uh check it out and you know have fun with it <laughs> that's all i can say i guess and i'm gonna try to get chris back on here to cover uh for one getting laid and another big topic is uh performing and en- performance enhancing drugs and dealing with social and you know regular anxiety and how you know i will have a lot of input on that because i've dealt with that in my life so you know subscribe to these podcasts if you liked it and check out chris's website thanks chris man this was awesome man i really appreciate it hey appreciate you having me on i'll uh, i'll be back sometime if if you need those topics covered yeah man we definitely will so we'll get you back on here all right guys we're gonna call it a day thanks a lot thanks for listening and you know keep going out there and striving for greatness keep improving yourselves peace Thanks for listening to the Improvement Podcast with Sean Russell. Get more episodes, more tips, and download our free self improvement ebooks at www.menprovement.com.